Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll see a one more concept in operating system that is a deadlock detection. So in our previous session, we have seen a deadlock detection method and that is a resource allocation graph as well as a wait for graph. And in today's session, we'll see the deadlock detection using banker's algorithm. So already in our previous session, we have seen this banker's algorithm in deadlock avoidance. So the only difference between the banker's algorithm in deadlock avoidance and the deadlock detection means, so in the deadlock avoidance, so before allocating the process itself, we are going to uh, use this banker's algorithm in order to uh, allocate the resources to the processors in order to avoid the deadlock situation. So coming to this deadlock detection, once already the, there is a deadlock and now we are going to detect whether there is a deadlock or not. That means this process will be applied only when the deadlock occurs. Okay, where the deadlock occurs that we are going to uh, identify in this deadlock detection. So let us take a small example in that. This is also a banker's algorithm. So whatever the thing we have done in the banker's algorithm, the same thing we are going to apply here. Right. So I will post the banker's algorithm link in the description so that just go through that so that you will be getting an idea what is a banker's algorithm and then you can refer this so it will be very easy for you to understand this one right now in this uh, question so you can see there are three different resources one thing so this problem will be uh, suitable for the resources if the resources are having multiple instances that means the number of a quantity of resources as more right so here we are taking three resources r1 r2 and uh, i mean r0 r1 and r2 so where r0 we are having eight resources and r1 we are having a two resources and r2 we are having a six resources so already the allocation has been done and now the process are in a situation right so in an unsafe situation you can see here allocation r0 how many r0 in the resources are there 3 plus 3, 6 plus 2, 8. So all the R0 resources have been allocated. And R1, 2. So total 2 are there. Two, both the resources have been allocated with P0 and P3. Next, R2, 6 resources are available. And among that 6, all the 6 resources are allocated to P2, P3 and P4. And still, P0 requires 0 resources to complete its execution. And P1 requires 202, two instances of R0, zero instance of R1, and two instances of R2 are required to complete its execution. And P2, zero instance of R0, zero instance of R1, and one instance of R2 is required to complete its execution, and so on. Right now, what are the available resources? So we know that available resources means the total number of resources minus the allocation of resources. So R0 are 8, and here also 8. The R0 is 0. So, 0 instance of R0 resources are available. Similarly, R1 total is 2, allocated is 2. So, R1 is also 0. R2, 6 resources are there totally. Here, 6 resources have been allocated. So, it is also 0. So, there are no availability of the resources. Still, we are checking whether this kind of situation is safe or unsafe. So, among that, what we have seen? In the banker's algorithm, we have seen need is less than or equal to available. Then update available, right? Update available, right? So this is the thing we have seen in the banker's algorithm. The same thing here we are applying. So instead of need, we are using a one more term called request. Okay, request. So here we need to find the request is less than or equal to available. For example, consider P0. So request is less than or equal to available. That means required, I mean required resources. So request is 0, 0, 0 and availability is 0, 0, 0. So less than or equal to true, true, true. So if all the true, P0 completes its execution. We have seen the same thing, right? P0 completes its execution and we need to update available. So, update available. So, uh, how it will be available means available is equal to 
So already available resources are 0, 0, 0. So once P0 completes its execution, whatever the resources allocated for process P0 will be deallocated. So this will be deallocated. So plus allocated resources for P0. So now the availability will be 0, 1, 0. So the, now the availability will update with 0, 1, 0. Hope you understood, right? And now P1. P1. So what is the required? Required is 202. What is the available? Available is 010. So 2 is less than 0. False. 0 is less than 1. True. 2 is less than 0. False. So this is not possible. So P1 can't complete its execution with the available resources. So just skip this one. Move on with the next one. Okay. This we can't execute right now. Next P2. P2. So P2 required is 0, 0, 001 and available is 0, 010. 0. So 0 less than 0, true, less than or equal to. So you have to write this one, less than or equal to. And 0 less than or equal to 1, true, 1 less than 0, false. So this can also not able to perform. P2 can't able to perform. Next, it will move on with the P3. P3. What is the required? Required. P3 requires 100. Zero, zero. What are the available? 0, 1, 0. 1 is less than or equal to 0. It is a false. This is true and this is true. So 1 is false. So this is also not possible. So P3 can't able to complete its execution. Okay. Next to P4. What happens? Required. What are the required? 0, 0, 2. What are the available resources? 0, 1, 0. So 0 less than or equal to 0. True. 0 less than or equal to 1. True. 2 less than or equal to 0. False. So 1 false is there. So this is also not possible. Okay. This is also not possible. It is not possible to complete its execution. Now reverse. I mean it will move on with the P1. Again still P1 requires 2, 0, 2. But we are having 0, 1, 0, which is not possible. So here, other than P0, all the remaining are in a deadlock situation. Because here we can see, with the available resources, no other process can complete its execution other than P0. Okay, you have seen this one. So then we can say that there is a deadlock. There is a deadlock. So the same algorithm we are using, the same algorithm, the same banker's algorithm we are using, but here we are, uh, the situation is once the all the processes, I mean all the resources are allocated to the process, then we have to find out the deadlock situation. We will be finding whether the same, uh, the, the situation is a safe or unsafe, the state is a safe or unsafe, okay. So, hope you understood. So, P0 has been completed its execution, but after completion of P0, some resources have been deallocated and they are available, but still no other process are able to complete its execution. Right? So, in such a way, the same banker's algorithm will be used to detect whether it is in a safe state or unsafe state. So, deadlock detection. Right? So, for example, if I am doing the small correction okay i'm doing the small correction in p2 if it, it also requires see 0 0 0 okay now what happens you can observe p1 can't able to execute p2 still it is requiring 0 0 0 so then it will be true then available will be updated see then available will be updated so then available will be 0, 1, 0 plus whatever the resources allocated with uh, 3, 0, 0, 3, 0, 3. So then it will become 3, 1, 3. So the availability become 3, 1, 3. So with the 3, 1, 3, P2 has been completed. Next, P3. So P3 uh, required is 1, 0, 0 and here it is we are having 3, 1, 3. 
so this is true so this is also possible right so this is also possible next available should be updated available will be uh, 313 plus 311 623 the available becomes 623 so it was completed next go to the p4 available are 6 2 3 6 2 3 so this is also true then what happens possible so available will be 6 2 3 plus 0 0 2 so 6 2 5 this becomes 6 2 5 okay so this is also possible next again p1 required 202 avail available are 625 okay then it is possible so now available will be updated with 827 somewhere we have got wrong so 303 so 313 so 313 p3 after p3 completed c 313 624 so this is 624 624 and after completion of p4 62 sorry yes so here it is uh, 202 uh, not possible so p2 it goes with the p2 now it becomes uh, 010 plus 303 so it becomes 3 1 and 3 and then p3 6 2 4 6 2 4 next here it will be 6 2 4 and it becomes 6 2 6 and now it becomes p2 p1 6 2 so here, here it is required 200 sorry required is 202 626 then the availability will be 626 uh, plus allocated resources 200 so that becomes available will becomes 826 which are equal so we need to update we are comparing with the available we are comparing with the available and we are updating the available by releasing the allocation right so available will be updated with available is equal to available plus allocation because the, whatever the resources allocated will be deallocated so this is the thing right don't get confused so but see what happens when i give here zero then we are getting a safe state but whenever it is 001 that will be the that will be the deadlock situation so this is how the banker's algorithm only will be used for both deadlock detection as well as a deadlock avoidance right so hope you understood this one and uh, if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session Share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.